Hi guys, it's Anna. And this is Esther, and you're listening to Crashing Borders. So today we have a very special guest joining us, Vince Opera Sabo, who is the co-chief executive officer at Opera Media. So welcome, Vince, and thank you so much for accepting our invitation. Thank you so much for having me. Amazing to be here. So for our listeners, I've known Vince for quite a long time. He was actually a classmate of my sisters in elementary school and in middle school so I've known you since you were like six or seven years old which is kind of crazy but he was this like sweetest little kid he was curious about everything and anything and just by looking at him you could see how special he was and in a way different from everyone else And throughout the years, I followed him on social media, I watched his YouTube, and we kind of kept in touch. So I um, saw all the amazing stuff that he's been doing. And personally, he's been such a motivation for me. And I'm constantly blown away by his personality and everything that he does. So uh, he was definitely on the top of my list when I was thinking about potential guest speakers. So I'm really, really happy that we finally managed the time to talk. Um, so welcome again. Thank you so much for accepting our invitation. And for our listeners, if you could just introduce yourself, what is that you've been up to in the past years up to now? Yeah, for sure. But I just want to put this out there as like a disclaimer that I by no means have it all figured out or I'm not like a super successful you know, business guy. Um, still really young and, and just getting my feet wet in this uh, in this um, you know industry but yeah so my name is uh, Vince and uh, I'm an 18 year old entrepreneur um, currently like homeschooled I've been homeschooling for around one year um, and basically the the business I, I run is uh, Oprah media which is um, a social media agency where we work with influencers and and, uh, course creators or like education companies, online education companies um, to grow on YouTube. And uh, we help them with um, video uh, creation, production editing, and also distribution. So that is our our niche, you could say. Um, And that is the only service that we really focus on. And uh, yeah, it's, it's still like just in the early stages. I've been doing it for around two years at this point. And now we are working with um, seven to eight clients and uh, it's a small team of um, three. So uh, yeah, that is, you know, what I do. Also do YouTube on the side. Um, And yeah, that is pretty much it. (laughs) Um, Thank you for introducing this. And so how did this whole journey start? How old were you? How did you get the idea to start um, Opera Media or you YouTube? Mm. Yeah, for sure. Um, So when I was growing up, like from seven, I was just super obsessed with video games. Like I was a huge nerd and, and gamer. Uh, so yeah, I was playing a lot of video games and also uh, watching a lot of YouTube and consuming content there. So that's actually like where I kind of learned to, to speak English from watching a lot of English videos. Um, and so one day I found a guy called Gary Vaynerchuk. You might know about him. Uh, he is like one of the you know, big influencers in business space, entrepreneurship space. And uh, and he was talking about just in general, like online entrepreneurship and, and having that as a career path or like running your own business. And uh, yeah, that's kind of when when um, I got interested in this whole space. And um, yeah, ever since then, I just uh, <laughs> just been pretty obsessed with that. Like in my life, I've always been just all in on on one thing like in the beginning I I was super into juggling and like yo-yoing and then I was into video games and then I got into business um and yeah at first it started with me doing some freelance video editing work that I learned from YouTube so most of what I know is from like online courses or, or YouTube and uh and then it it slowly like turned into an agency when I had more clients that I could handle myself. And that's when I hired my you know, first uh, contractor, uh, you could say, or like team member. And um, yeah, that, that's like in a nutshell how, how it happened. Obviously, that it wasn't like a straight line. 
Like I tried many different business models. I tried affiliate marketing, drop shipping, uh, before I found the the social media agency model. But that's been the one that kind of worked out for me. Yeah, for sure. I remember your yo yo like. <laughs> yeah. <kind of. laughs> It was really cute. He was like this seven, eight year old guy, and it was like going around. You even like entered the yo-yo competition, didn't you? Yeah, <laughs> that's so cute. Um, but yeah, how did you start this whole journey? So, what was the first step? How old were you when you started? Mm. Yeah, I think like when I when when I started entrepreneurship, at first, like my first attempt was affiliate marketing. And that is basically when you uh, get your own personal link from a company and then you try to drive traffic to that link and get sales through it. And then you get a commission for each sale, right? So I was trying to uh, sell like fat loss teas <laughs> at like 13 years old uh, by commenting on like random weight loss blogs saying like, hey, this tea really helped me out. Looking back, I'm kind of embarrassed of that. Like that was really scammy, but that, yeah, that was my first try. I haven't got any sales. <laughs> so I did that for like a year. And then after that, I um, tried drop shipping, which is another different business model. I tried that for a year, but I didn't have enough money to get started with that. Uh, so I, I just failed miserably, haven't got like any sales again. <laughs> and then, um, yeah, then after that, um, I tried freelancing and, and I got my first client, I think at end of 14 or, or 15 maybe like middle, middle mid 15 um and i just did some free work for someone who uh, whose videos i was already watching in the beginning and then he really liked it so then i you know i was like that's amazing but i can't be doing this for free forever so then uh yeah at, at 15 i was like all right i i will ask for for something he was like how much you charge but i, I had no idea how much to charge right like what what does a 15 year old kid know about like how much you should charge um never even had like a proper job so i was like yeah i will charge like ten dollars per video and i was making like instagram small video edits um so yeah it came out to like 10 bucks an hour which was like pretty good money in in, in my country and then um i started getting mentored by that one client he was probably like he, he probably really liked the fact that i was so young and ambitious and all that so he told me to start charging double and then I started just doubling my prices. Uh, but then it got to a point where I was like editing a ton myself, had multiple clients. Um, and then, yeah, I, I, at that point, like, I couldn't do everything myself. So that's when I hired more people. Uh, I don't know if I got off topic with the question was like how I initially got started, right? Yeah, oh, so, yeah. so that is kind of how it evolved. Um, but yeah, I might have missed a couple of steps. <laughs> No, well, that was like very young and we can see that you kind of had this entrepreneur your yeah. mindset from the start. So uh, did you know that you always wanted to have your own company or what motivated mm. you to start this? Yeah, probably since I was like 12 or 11, I, I knew I, I wanted to do something where I can have more freedom than at the average workplace. So I, I, I knew I didn't really want to work uh, a normal nine to five job. And that, like, you know, no hate on nine to fives. I think like they, they are good for, for uh, like, we, I think we need them and uh, it's good for a lot of people. But I, I just, uh, I just never really liked, I, I, it sounds so cringe, but I just never really liked being told what to do. Uh, like even in school, I just, I always hated school, like from my guts. I never liked doing homework or any of that because I, if it, if it wasn't something I was genuinely interested in, I just didn't want to do it. So yeah, I think I, from from 10, 11, I kind of knew I wanted to do something on my own. Uh, it, I didn't think it was necessarily business. And, you know, I, I, I'm still not sure if I'm going to be doing business forever. Like I'm still so young. But um, yeah, it, it kind of came naturally, I guess, to me. So how did your parents take it when you told them your plans? I know that they are like really sweet, really supportive. Mm. Uh, but like, what can they say when it's like a 14 year old kid or 13 year old kid like goes to them and says like see that's what I want to do I'm not sure how can I continue with like I don't know studying and stuff like what did they say and how do you balance high school and building your own business Hmm. yeah so for a really long time I didn't even tell them 
like I was trying to do it. I think for one and a half years, I was just learning as much as I could. Like in all my free time, all I did was just learn about uh, different ways to make money online. And, uh, and I even tried doing them. Um, but, but yeah, so like when I first uh, told them about what I was really doing um, was when I got my first paying client and then they were like, okay, like that's, you know, pretty cool. At least he's not spending all his time playing video games. <laughs> like, I don't think they thought much of it. And then, yeah, as time went on, they were, I'm really, really grateful because they were always really supportive of me. Like, like they were like, okay, as, as long as you get your school stuff done, like we don't really care, do, you know, do what you got to do. <laughs> so yeah, I, I like until, until I was getting like some, uh, all right results, uh, at least, at least like significant results, uh, where I started to, you know, have to pay tax and that kind of stuff until then I really didn't really even like tell them, but, uh, yeah, they, I don't think they thought much of it. They were supportive. Um, so that's about it. <laughs> It's nice. Yeah, that they gave you like the freedom to do whatever you wanted. Yeah. Um, so what about the financials? So you said that dropshipping was kind of difficult. Like how expensive mm. was it to start Opera Media or did you require any investors? Uh, for yeah. yeah, so uh, so with, with the different business models I've tried so far, which have been these, uh, well, I guess four basically. I, tr I tried YouTube as well for myself, uh, like I'm running my own YouTube channel. Then uh, then did like affiliate marketing, which is, which you can get started for free, but it's pretty difficult to learn, I think, uh, or like to do it properly. It takes a long time. Then try drop shipping. I think at that point I had like 200 bucks to my name. Uh, so yeah, that, that wasn't enough to get like a proper e-commerce brand set up, <laughs> obviously. Um, so, so yeah, then, then when I started the freelancing and then later on what turned into the agency, the great thing about that was that I could start it with completely zero. I just had to invest my time into it. So, you know, in the beginning, I was just trading my personal skills and time for money uh, by providing a service to, to a business or, or a person. Uh, and then as I made more money um, from the freelancing, I could invest it back into equipment or software or employee, employees later on or different courses. So, yeah, I, I didn't get any investors and, I personally, with the small business knowledge that I have, I wouldn't encourage a lot of young people our age to get investors on for their first business venture because I think it adds, like, and now, I know that nowadays, you know, venture capitalism and getting your first round of funding and getting like a new startup, uh, you know, developing an app, uh, the new U Uber of something, like, I know that's like super trendy and cool, but I think it adds such an like a tremendous amount of pressure to that, you know, person in their early twenties that I think it can actually like stunt their business. And, and I think it like hires their chances of failure. So I would personally recommend starting out uh, some sort of cash flow business as somebody's first business. And that maybe, you know, later on, as you have more money for yourself, maybe then you don't have to take on as many investor money so you can keep more of the company for yourself. That's just my perspective. I uh, haven't really been into that word super deep, but uh, yeah, I just feel like that's part of the reason why the failure rate is so high uh, in entrepreneurship in general. Because yeah, people like young guys or young girls take on a lot of money and then they have all this pressure and they haven't learned how to handle that yet. Um, but that's just my two cents on it. Yeah, that's yeah. so true. And even I think like sometimes you have to fail to like learn stuff and as you mentioned, like you failed a couple of times and then yeah. there's just all like added to your own experience and that you could use for for your current like business or whatever you do. And yeah. it just like really adds to it. Um, so you mentioned kind of how, got, how you got your first client. So basically you reached out to them um, mm -hmm. and then, you know, he was kind of like your mentor as well. But was it easier to reach out after to other clients? And how do you make sure that the clients take you seriously as a 17 or 18 year old kid, basically? Yeah. How do you gain or show credibility? Yeah, totally. So, yeah, once you have that first client, uh, it gets a lot easier to get new clients because then you can leverage uh, the name of that first client. So what I recommend for a lot of people, uh, even some like young guys who I kind of mentor to who wanted to start a similar business to mine, 
is to just do free work in the beginning for someone who has a big name or big authority in the niche that you specifically want to go into. And, and uh, they are most likely going to say yes, because like who doesn't want some free content or whatever sort of value you can provide to them, whether you're doing copywriting, email marketing or whatever. If you do it for free and you're doing a good job at it, they will most likely accept it. So once you have that first client, even if it's for free, then it will get a lot easier to reach out to someone because then you can say, hey, my name is this and this. I do this like this is how I can help you. And I already did this for this person. If that, and if that person has a big na name in that industry that you're in, uh, you will instantly gain like a lot of trust. Um, so yeah, I think it does get easier. Um, what, what was the other question? <laughs> uh, so it was about like, how do you show credibility? Like how do you make right. sure that they take you seriously? Yeah, so I think uh, one thing that you can do if you're young um, and you want to sell yourself or sell the service that you're selling is um, to kind of, especially if it's like social media related. So if you are like a 17 year old real estate agent, then it might be a lot trickier to do, or if you're a lawyer or something, but if you're just doing social media for brands, um, then you can kind of flip the script, like say, Hey, I can do this better than a 30 year old executive who went through university because like they didn't even teach social media marketing uh 10 years ago or uh, and, and i grew up with this technology and and you know it's it's in my blood so so you can kind of uh if, if you're in your uh, early 20s or 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 late teens like you can uh, switch the script and also at the end of the day people from my experience uh especially with international clients they don't really care about your age as long as you can properly communicate with them and, and talk like a normal person right and uh as long as your work is actually good like that's just what matters you need to i think you need to work on your skill sets and especially if you're in a service based business it's it's all about like how good results you can get and if you can get good results and if you can prove that you can get good results um then yeah i don't think you will have many issues or i personally haven't had the first one, getting the first client is the hardest, but if you can get good results for that, then it gets easier to prove that you can do what you are, what you say you can do. Yeah, I agree. And I think like kind of the reaching out part that you talked about is kind of what we saw with Anna with the podcast, how easy it is to just reach yeah. out to people and how happy people will be to just share their experience, how you know, uh, how they did their podcast, how they promoted it, or in your case, like the media, video editing, all of this. Um, yeah. So what is your favorite type of project? What is the project that you are really comfortable um, doing usually and that it comes really easily to you? Mm -hmm. uh, well, like, like I um, said in the beginning, I didn't really specify the exact service that we are selling at the moment, but it's, it's basically uh, working with... Um, like education companies, so you know, online course creators and uh, and YouTubers, and uh, we are doing uh, monthly videos for them. Um, so like managing their channels and growing it for them organically, basically, and kind of optimizing uh, the different videos and and uh, driving traffic to their sales page and and also optimizing that. So uh, I don't really have like a specific favorite kind of project in terms of. Uh, like we we basically work with two time, types of people, mainly people who are in the general business sphere and also people who are in the fitness space. Um, like these are the two main niches uh, or niches we work with. Um, so yeah, I, I like working on all different kinds of projects. In general, I like to get clients that I watch myself as well or like whose content I would consume if I... Uh, even if I weren't, you know, working with them. But yeah, I don't really have like one certain type of project that uh, I like working on more than others, I guess. I mean, that makes sense because like you kind of have all this opportunity to work with so many different people and it must be really fun, like not to, to just yeah. like do one specific thing. Yeah, and, and also uh, just I just wanted to kind of elaborate on the, the thing you said um, regarding like how easy it was to get people on the podcast as well when you reached out to them I think like I haven't realized this for so long or, or I had this image in my mind that someone who has a hundred thousand followers on Instagram or something I thought that 
they are like actual celebrities who, who never check their DMs and never respond. And it's crazy when you actually uh, reach out to them with something to offer, like they will respond so much more often than you would imagine. Like if I reach out to 10 people who I, who before I thought would never respond to me, like three of them probably will respond. Maybe they won't be interested, but like it's so much easier to actually get to these people um, that we kind of put on a pedestal, I think as a society than you would imagine. So I think that's just, just like encouragement for anyone who wants to start um, networking with these kind of people or, or maybe get clients like just do it because you have nothing to lose and uh, and they respond more than you would think in my experience yeah especially if you are like really passionate about what you do because then you can sell your like whatever product or service that you want them to consume it's just like plus we like reach out to people as you mentioned also that we actually think that they are like really inspiring and we really want to like hear and share their stories and then yeah. I think that's why kind of we can like reach out in a way that they respond um but so you mentioned that you faced a few challenges and then you had some failures along the way but was there any point when you thought that this whole fuss is not worth it that you would just like you know go back to school just like kind of like live a normal life yeah yeah the funny thing is when I had I don't think I ever like fully thought that that was an option because it's it's kind of like once you make enough money online to be able to you know travel and you can make that money from wherever you want in the world and work your own hours I think that just such a luxury uh, and you don't need a ton of money to do that. You just need to make enough to get by, right? Like once you do that, I think uh, the idea of of um, being stuck, kind of stuck or, or working at one place for 20 plus years, uh, or at least for me, that, you know, this might not apply to everyone. But yeah, for me after that, I was just like, I don't know if, I don't know if I could do it. And I don't mean it in a way like, oh, you know, I can't do it. I, I don't know if I would want to, even if it's, if it, even if it can be easier at times, I guess um so so yeah the the point where I was thinking about it though like the hardest still um was kind of the end of last year um where I went through a little bit of a like it's it's funny because then I was like already quote unquote sort of semi-successful with my business so I was making quite a, a good amount of money for my age for like one and a half years and then just out of nowhere, I went through like a pretty bad depressive uh, phase uh, where I struggled a lot with depression and, and, and anxiety. And that was like the closest I came to to wanting to just give it all up and, and go back to school and just do that. Um, but but yeah, I I never really thought of it as an option because, yeah, for, for the goals I, I had for myself since the beginning, I it, it didn't really it couldn't really work out unless I was I guess like working at like a really good job or, or a hedge fund or, or something of that sort which I, I don't think I would want like the pressure of that yeah I think yeah. that definitely when you do something that you like I mean that's kind of why we started this podcast in the first like time with Anna it was kind of during the first lockdown and we had friends all over the world and we were kind of sad to not hear their stories so we started to share their stories during lockdown, how the countries were dealing with uh, the whole COVID thing. And I think when you have something that you're passionate about, it's so much easier to just drag yourself from this uh, depressive path, part of you that obviously I mean, COVID, I feel like in increased onto people. And yeah. Um, I think, yeah, I think like people to push yourselves, like you're using your passions for that is so helpful. Um, so you mentioned that you grew up with, like social media and the internet and uh, like it's in your veins so how did you learn anything from it like um from the internet or youtube yeah totally i, I learned everything from there actually like I, I could probably list off le way less things uh that i learned from traditional education or or school uh than what i learned online like basically all the almost all the skills i have and uh just the overarching like knowledge um about how business works or whatever I th it's everything from like online courses and videos um so yeah I mean I, I think nowadays 
if you if you really want it like you can get almost um as good if not better education in a certain field from the internet and browsing different websites and places where you can get the knowledge from um as as university or um yeah so yeah i i learned almost everything from the internet and uh and i think it's just going to continue to go into this direction i mean even with covid it it showed us that you can learn online it's it might not be the best way to do it <laughs> in a lot of ways like you you miss the community aspect of it for sure but uh but i think online education is here to stay and not only online education but decentralized education where the actual people who have done the certain thing that you are trying to learn are the teachers themselves uh cuz i think decentralized education so uh online courses that kind of stuff it allows um the professionals to be paid a lot of money if they are doing an amazing job at teaching and you know with universities they are kind of limiting uh how much a professor can make um like like they make an it, 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 like a, a disgusting amount of money uh the actual owners of the universities uh right like they are private institutions so I think if if professors and and experts were are paid more for their knowledge then the teaching in general will be a lot better. So yeah, that's a long way to answer your question, but but yeah, I did learn a lot from internet. Um and I know that quite a few of your like clients are from the US or pretty much like from anywhere from the world. So mm-hmm. It's kind of difficult because of the whole like different time zones and everything. Plus you are in high school as well, if yep. that's right. Um so how does a typical day look like for you? Yeah, so I I wake up nowadays between like 7 and 8. Um and then after that um I get my morning routine in, which is uh, really important for me. Now I'm not going to pretend like I'm all perfect at this. Like I don't get my morning routine in every single day, but I aim to get it done like 80% of the days at least. And my morning routine is basically like waking up, doing my bed, after then uh you know brushing my teeth, pretty normal stuff. Uh and then I I have a like an, a red light therapy device that I bought recently. So I meditate um 20 minutes in front of that. Uh before I had that I just normally meditated 20 minutes every day. Uh and then take my supplements. I uh take a cold shower in the morning. Uh now w- when I'm feeling really strong I just go straight into the uh, the cold. Uh when I'm not I kind of let it go from like warm-ish, lukewarm to cold. But yeah, I make it cold every day still. Uh it helps a lot with uh, energy and and waking uh, you up. And then after that, I either go to the gym or or get started with work. Um, so there's kind of like how my morning routine looks like. And then after that, I like to work in the work blocks. So every work block can be anywhere from like one and a half to two hours for me, uh, where I just try to get really focused, deep work in. Uh, in the morning, I like to get two work blocks in where I work on my agency or on like long term stuff. So like creating systems. uh or creating content uh, basically i i like to work uh, on the long term things in the morning and then i have lunch after that and then in the afternoon i have uh like two blocks where i try to get my school work in now oh, I, i'm really bad at b- balancing school and 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 business so i my my way of doing it was just like not balancing it at all and not doing any school work for most of the year and then just trying to learn everything uh, or at least as much as i can so i can pass my exams in the last two weeks before my exams uh but but yeah so then i have two more work blocks and then um and then that's pretty much it so after that i just either like spend time with family or or go visit my friends or i don't know just go for a walk or something or just what watch netflix or youtube and then i go to sleep and uh try to get like 8 plus hours of sleep in every day. So, yeah, that's kind of how my daily routine looks like.
So how did the pandemic influence your business and yourself, whether it be physically or uh, mentally? Mm. Yeah, so my business, I've been one of the lucky ones who I think benefited it from it more than not. So since more people are spending time at home and, and on their phones and, and, and uh, laptops and computers, right? Like more uh, time is being spent on, on YouTube and just in media consumption in general. So there is more of a need than ever for content marketing and content creation. So yeah, my, my business like grew a lot um, throughout uh, the pandemic. I mean, at this point, it's been so long that I did have like ups and downs because <laughs> it's been over a year. But yeah, this year it's been amazing so far uh, in terms of like business. and. Um, Personally, it definitely had a, a toll on me, especially last year, because I, I moved out uh, last year in summer. And then before that, I didn't really notice anything. And then after it was also like good for a while, uh, like I enjoyed being uh, on my own. Uh, but then I, it got pretty lonely um, after a certain time. So, um, yeah, it, it definitely, definitely made me a lot more lonely last year. Um, but then I found like new friends, became really good friends with new people. So um, yeah, I guess it, it turned into a negative, uh, into a positive overall. But it's definitely uh, been difficult at times um, to like my anxiety definitely increased, uh, and just in general like being alone, not going out of the house for like days at, at after each other, like that's not normal for the human body. I think so. Yeah, it's been, it's been a learning experience, that's for sure. <laughs> so what is something that you are really looking for what, after like this whole pandemic is over or we go back to like the new normal or something? Mm. Um, little bars being open, I guess. Uh, I don't know, actually. Um, but yeah, I, I don't know, just, just uh, hanging out with uh, friends more and being able to spend more time uh, with a lot of people in, in one space, <laughs> you know, just like how it used to be. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. I, I still, like, even before um, the pandemic really started, I've been, I kind of realized when it started that I've been living uh, a quarantine lifestyle for a year at that point. So it didn't change much for me, honestly. Like since I became homeschooled in beginning of 2020, I had just been at home like almost uh, all week, um, 24 seven. So yeah, it didn't change too much for me, but yeah, I guess that's what I'm looking forward to maybe. <laughs> I mean, I'm flying to England tomorrow and I'm definitely going for the pubs, but <laughs> Yeah. Um, so now to go on to the personal development part. So do you agree with people that say that you have to take risks in order to develop yourself as a person and self-improve? Yeah. But what, what exactly, can you give me an example on like risk? Cause I, I never truly understand what they mean when they say risks. So what do you um, think? whether it be like risking maybe your um, academic life or studies or whether it be investment, investing your time mm. or, um, I mean, approaching clients when you're very young, like 14 or 15, you know, mm. you don't know anything about the business. You could get, um, you know, a yeah. smart plug kind of thing. Yeah, I, I agree. Uh, I, I just feel like a lot of times these aren't actual risks. So, like, I think a lot of things we kind of overcomplicate or, like, make it bigger than it is in our heads. Uh, like, for example, reaching out to someone, like, what is your risk? There is literally zero risk. I mean, the worst thing that can happen is that you get ghosted. I mean, if you're a dude, that probably happened to you <laughs> anyways. Uh, so it's not going to be anything new. Uh, or, you know, or if you, for example, start a new hobby or, or something, like I think the only risk you can have is not actually trying it if it's something you're genuinely interested in and, and can see yourself doing long-term. Because then, you know, like you could, you could just not be doing something that you uh, want to do for the rest of your life. So yeah, I, yeah, I do agree that you, you should be taking risks, even if it's like financial, uh, obviously it should be calculated risks, but um, yeah, that just most things are, aren't real risks. If, if what you're doing is actually super important for you, I think like it's all about priorities in my opinion. Yeah. I guess it's like, 
it's kind of different when you are like a bit older versus where you are now because like as you said like all these yeah, risks like they not really risk because like you are 18 years old like first thing yeah. that happens like you start something else but when i guess like someone is like i don't know that in their 30s 40s or something and that's when they want to take that step and then they mm-hmm. actually have to like give up on you know um a permanent job that pays a salary it i mean yeah i yeah. think it's yeah that's totally yeah 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 sorry i don't mean to cut you off but i think yeah that's a totally different case um yeah, but for most people, like, even if you're 22, 23, 24, like, you're still so young, I think. <laughs> so, I, yeah, I, I think people need to, you know, take more risks. It's, it sounds really, really cliche, but but it's true. Uh, obviously, yeah, as like you said, if you have kids or a family or you're 30, 40, then it gets a lot more difficult. But, yeah, especially if you're young, just, like, you know, use it for your advantage. Yeah. The only these risks we like take with Esther is basically like adding an extra egg to like a cookie or something. <laughs> I don't know. I it's yeah. it. I mean, like we are still young, but I, for me, it's always something that I try to not stress about, but still stressing about. Like even if it's about like getting a graduate job, getting I don't know, like just like not knowing for a hundred percent what I'm gonna do with my life. You know. Mm-hmm it kind of like um like yeah. makes it harder but we like you also mentioned like stress and like anxiety um that was it was a bit harder for you like at the end of the previous year and we also like talked about this with Kelsey who was on the podcast who's a psychologist in the US and then um it's just like it's so hard to be so stressed that it kind of like spires into like either depression or just a higher amount of anxiety so how do you make sure that you like keep this in within like a kind of like a normal healthy rage what do you do to stop it from affecting your mental health Mm. uh well there are a few things i i started doing or focusing on more uh to, to that I feel like helped me uh first one is like getting a, a therapist I know that's uh still like a pretty re- weird thing to do I think uh like it's looked at weird like oh what a weirdo like you, you are you do you have a problem or something no like but, that's what we talked about like yeah. in in Hungary it's like yeah. it is considered like a vague thing but like for example like as we study in the UK it's like the most normal thing ever mm. like as they talk about it and everything but it's still such a huge difference between countries it's just yeah that's yeah. what we said it's the same in france like it's it's very taboo and we've never talked about mental health or or anything related to it until i got to university in the uk and when we talk about it with our friends uh in the uk with anna it's incredible to see how they're all so aware about it and they're all very open about um you know how important it is to see therapists like important steps within your life and how every person should do it to you know have someone to talk to and I mean I know that in some countries it's very taboo and at first for me in France it was very taboo when I heard all these talks at university about mental health and all this because I, I had never heard about it um except in the movies or um and I know that we talked about it with Anna and that's why we we had someone from the U.S. talk about it because I think that's an aspect in which I feel like English speaking countries are way more like advanced yeah. to it. I feel like they yeah. are very open about yeah, mental health. Yeah, totally. Uh yeah, so that so that's been one like going to a therapist I go like every other week or so. Uh and I only started doing that a month ago. Um and I haven't been through any like cause because before it was always like a roller coaster for me. I for a little while, uh, and I don't want to sound dramatic, <laughs> but uh, yeah, for a little while, I thought that I might be like bipolar or something because I was always going through like so big ups and downs because it's like if, if in business, for example, something goes well and you get a new big client or or whatever you're doing well, it can be such a big high, like bigger high than any drugs. Uh, and, and like you can be, yeah, just like on top of the world for, for a whole week. And then after that, I would always go down, uh, like really steep. 
uh, and, and that would happen. Like I've been, I would be going through like these ups and downs. Uh, and, and I guess what, what it's been for me is like just trying to balance it out so I can stay pretty close to, to just the normal state. Cause you know, like it, it, when you're, when you're down, it's like, it's like, the, it can be really, really bad. Like you just don't want, you don't want anything else. You don't care about, um, money or, or career or anything. You just want it to end. Um, so yeah, that, that's been one thing. And then meditation has been, uh, I, and now it's, nowadays it's a really like trendy topic, but that also helped me out like mindfulness practice and meditation. I've been doing that for like one and a half years or so, but only started like seriously doing it, uh, like six months ago or so. Um, and then what else? Well, yeah, well, first of all, quick disclaimer, I don't, uh, we don't condone the use of any legal or legal substances, but like also I, I would feel bad for not, not at least mentioning it. So, uh, work with psychedelics also helped me a lot. I feel like so now, now that's that's also becoming. I don't know. You, you got you guys probably have heard about like microdosing and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, I feel like that also helped with my anxiety and and depression. Like experimenting with that. Um, so yeah, these have been like the main three things, and also just trying to stay healthy, like regularly working out and sleeping enough and eating the right food. <laughs> Pretty basic stuff. No, but also I feel like it must be difficult to have had to deal with all of this, like having clients then dealing with your academic life on the side in high school mm -hmm. and having all of this, you know, the, the life, working life aspect yeah. and then managing like all of that. I feel like it must have been really, you know, stressful to kind of balance all that when you were so young. Yeah. And like for, for me, the biggest thing was not even that. It's such a weird thing because obviously – for, for the longest time, I always heard from everyone like, hey, money won't make you happy. And I was like, yeah, yeah, sure. Like, let me, you know, let me let me still see you. Like, I think a lot of people are like that where they hear that. And and when you don't when you don't have any success in your career yet or whether that be money or, or followers or, you know, building a big podcast, whatever that might be like until you don't have that, you feel like once you had that it could fix like all your insecurities and and sadness and problems and then the thing is like once you actually get some of that like what you always wanted after like working for it and sacrificing almost everything for like two years or even longer maybe then that's like the worst because because then you have all this stuff like if you wanted to uh, get a house or a car or whatever um you get that but then you're like oh shit well now I got all this stuff that I was like working so hard for and I still feel shit. Like I, I still haven't, like the way I look at myself still haven't changed anything. So that's when I think people kind of realize, or at least I realize that it, it doesn't really come like happiness and feeling good overall. doesn't really come from external factors. You really need to work on it uh, yourself. Uh, so yeah, I know uh, it's also a really like cliche topic, but I, I feel like it's so true. And it isn't talked about enough still, I think. Like most people our age, I think just can be so career focused and obsessed. Like our generation is just like, oh, I need the Lambo, the yacht, the, the luxury vacations that we don't even think about like how <laughs> you, you, that won't really fix your main insecurities and, and issues. It can fix a lot of them, of course. Like, if you struggle to pay your rent or, or food or car or whatever, like until you have your basic needs met, like money is everything, uh, I would imagine. But yeah, after that, it's it can be a pretty slippery slope <laughs> from my experience. And I haven't yeah. even achieved like a ton of success yet, just like a little slither of it, you know. And you talk about um, sacrificing things for this business and um, putting things aside. Uh, to achieve what you wanted and so how do you find this way to stay motivated is it the people around you or um that you're doing what you like yeah mm. yeah um uh, i'm like 90 percent of the time i'm not super mo like i'm not a super motivated person i'm like probably one of the laziest people i know and i'm not saying that sar sarcastically like even in school i 
never really did my homework. I was always trying to get out of every responsibility. <laughs> so yeah, I, I don't really believe in motivation that much. Uh, what I try to do is uh, really figure out what I want to do and and what truly feels like uh, or, or what something I try to find something that I want to um, get in my life and and something that's like deeply inside me that like like really want it. And then after that, kind of figure out how I can get there and like reverse engineer it and then um, just try to stay disciplined. Like I think goals are, goals are, goals can be pretty good. Um, like if you say, oh, I want to lose X amount of pounds or uh, and weight, or I want to go running five times a week, like that, that's fine. But um, like, for most outcome-based goals, you won't really get there on, unless your daily habits are there in place. So I think like that's the most important. You need to focus on first on becoming the person who is deserving of getting that certain result that you want to get. So if you want to have like a successful business, making a lot of money, you first need to become that person who can handle that, like who 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 has like a strict strict schedule and who can stick to that who you know is knowledgeable who uh, went through a lot of ups and downs like mentally uh so yeah that's my two cents on it do you devote like a specific time for your personal development either like doing online mm -hmm. courses reading books or something or is it something that comes with the experience that you gain from your current job i think both uh, but yeah I, i do definitely spend a lot of time watching online courses that, or, or reading books. Um, but yeah, I usually do it in the afternoon after I'm done with my work. And uh, I noticed that this year I've been actually doing like watching less videos and, and reading less books because I got to a point where I was just like reading uh, so much and watching so many videos. Like I was consuming all this knowledge, but I wasn't really putting in any action. Because, and I think that that's, that happens to a lot of people where, they go to all these different seminars and they listen to all the different podcasts and ebooks and they have all the knowledge in the world like in theory they know how to run a billion dollar corporate corporation but they never had one single sales call or they never uh wrote one line of code if they are trying to make an app for example so yeah it, it, for for me I, i do try to get my personal development done in the evenings like to one hour a day or so but uh But yeah, lately I've been doing less because I think, yeah, it's important to uh, get, um, well, I think Tim Ferriss said something pretty good uh, about information, like try to get um, just in time information, not just in case information. So like try to get the information that you need right now to get to the next step where you need to get to in your business and not just like hoard all the knowledge in the world just in case you need it because like if you read a book for example about something you might need to do in a year you will forget it anyways by the time you would need that information so you would just reread it anyways and so when you started obviously now you're speaking like a fluently english and like a native did you did you always speak that good of an english and was it difficult for you to start at the beginning were you a little bit insecure about speak English with your clients or was it always um, quite smooth for you? Yeah, def definitely it was um, a little difficult in the beginning. I was I was really, really fortunate because, uh, for example, one thing my dad did was like, uh, he told me if I if I wanted something, uh, like for example, it was uh, getting like my first uh, computer um, as, a, as a kid for Christmas, uh, I would have to read like a whole Harry Potter uh, book and then write down every single word that I didn't know uh, and like create like my own dictionary of that. And then, yeah, I would like, he would ask them for me and I would have to learn. Yeah. So he would basically like encourage me to learn English. So that definitely helped. And also video games and, uh, and there I could only talk in English with like teammates uh, or, or even like watching a lot of films in English and, and YouTube videos that helped. So Yeah, by the time I was getting into uh, online business, I could speak to the point where I could communicate what I wanted to say. Uh, I had like a really thick accent still and would get hung up like a lot of times. Um, but 
yeah, I just knew like the only way to get better at it is to is to do it. So yeah, it's hard in the beginning, especially if you're insecure about your accent or or the fact that you might tumble on your words or whatever. But yeah, if you don't do it, then it won't get magically better. I think like just speaking is is the best thing you can do. It's you can't really learn to speak English from from books, and that's what they try to do in school. I think I think so. That's yeah. I find that like not the most effective way to learn. Yeah, I remember you like when you like I don't know, I was like thirteen, fourteen, and then just like uploaded all these like YouTube videos like in English. <laughs> it was just like I couldn't do it. Like I had to go to UK to like <laughs> start speaking properly. Um. So, given that you obviously like need to have quite a strong online presence in social media, so where you can like kind of like reach out to clients, they know that you have like you they can see your work and you have a portfolio to kind of like show um how hard it is to build up an image or a personal brand to attract uh, attract followers or potential customers on social media mm. i think it's hard if you make it hard but it can be easy if you make it easy for yourself so the problem is a lot of people think that what gets clients is is just perfected content where they have everything scripted they have they are looking for the perfect like video setup and and just get lost in the details and and kind of portray a fake image like they, a lot of times they want to look like they are more than what they really are like live a better life than they really do uh so yeah if, you, if you're trying to build a social presence like that then it will be hard because you will be like trying to fake everything and, and make everything perfect but I think, and, and and I think that won't even work as well as just uh, being genuine to, you know, your audience and um, and just staying yourself. And I, for the longest time, I never understood, like, what does that mean to be yourself? But just genuinely talk about the things you're interested in and express, you know, what you have inside. And, um, yeah, just try to be transparent and uh, share all the knowledge that you have. Don't, don't hoard it. Like don't feel like uh, people won't pay you for that same knowledge if you put it out for free uh so yeah i would just say like it it, it, does, it isn't necessarily uh that hard if you if you make it easy for yourself and just uh not get lost in the details and try to make perfect content like the more you make videos the better you get at it just like with talking in english and uh i got lost in that in the beginning i thought that i needed all my videos to be perfect and uh, I would have gotten further a lot faster if I just put out a lot of like medium quality videos, because then those mediums will turn into good ones. And then those good ones will turn into like amazing ones eventually. So what are your plans for the future or for the future of um, Opera Media? Are there any new areas that you would like to explore? Uh, not, not really. Uh, I want to, in the next few years, uh, get it to uh, be like a seven figure business. That's my like main goal. Uh, I mean, the, the only way I will probably expand it. Uh, and to be honest, the name, I don't really like the name. I just, <laughs> I just honestly had to come up with something in a few hours. I was just like, I'm going to take imperfect action. Like, I don't care. I will just put together like a quick website and, and name. So I, I didn't put much thought into the name and I will probably change it. Cause I, I, thinking back it, i feel super weird that it's part of my like last name i don't like it uh so i might be changing the name but but anyways that's off the off topic so <laughs> what what i want to kind of do is is still keep uh keep this uh service that i'm selling at the moment and then scale this up to the point where i'm working uh with my team with like 30 to 40 clients maybe i will probably move my price points a lot higher and and try to go for really like a high ticket market and also i want to be uh doing more um consulting work in the future so not just uh service based um stuff but also like one-on-one -on -one consulting uh with either brands or people who maybe want to build their own agency uh or something like that um, so yeah, that's kind of like where I'm uh, trying to go, and uh, I'm definitely a really, def definitely have a really, really long way to go and a lot of things to learn. But um, I mean, that's the that's the fun part of it. I think like there's just so far to go that you always have something new to learn.
And yeah. what final advice would you give to people who want to be at the Roberts' online presence or a personal brand? And what would you suggest for people in general who want to start a new business? Mm. I would I would say if I had to say one thing, it would be uh, to learn like critical thinking and systems thinking. So for for like building a business, try to think uh, in uh, in systems. Eventually, as as you already have it going, like how you can systemize different parts of your personal life and also your your business. And for critical thinking, what I mean by that is just like question everything like even if society says that things should go one way or, or they are supposed to be like that just always question it and, and look at data not just what they tell you in the mainstream media or, or the teachers or whatever and just yeah like it I guess just take advice mostly from people who are where you want to go and not just in one area of their life but in, in general like yeah, that I guess that would be my my overall advice. I know that's not super clear. I'm not like, oh, here is one thing you can do, and then immediately you're gonna be successful. I don't think that thing really exists. But yeah, just thinking for yourself and and learning to thinking think in systems, like how you can systemize things, systemize things, <laughs> and, uh, and um, yeah, just don't just be just stick to the really basics, like. I think all business really comes down to is is value creation and like finding a problem in the market, uh, finding a solution for it, and then just reaching out to those people who have the problem and uh, and solving it. Um, just talking with your ideal customers as much as you can, and and really just just let your north star be uh, helping your customers, and I think then you will eventually succeed with whatever you're doing. So yeah, that that would be my advice if if you can call that. No, yeah, I agree. I think there's not like one step to success. And I think what we saw in our, also our previous podcast episode is that, all, I mean, you need the feedback from the customers and you need to like surround yourself with people, obviously, that can like bring um, new aspects to the, of the business to you and like help you uh, within getting it right. So uh, where can our listeners find you? Whether it be like the website or mm. Instagram, LinkedIn, YouTube, yeah so uh, so pro- <laughs> thank you so probably like uh the best way to find me is either my instagram or my youtube and both of them is just vince opera so v-i-n-c-e o-p-r-a and um yeah if you shoot me a dm i will probably respond <laughs> um and yeah whether whether it be relating to um agency work or or just like personally wanting to reach out to me that's probably the best way to do it thank you guys for listening to our episode with linda and stay tuned as we have some really special episodes coming up